Welcome to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm Isis and a and Athletics has already hit the ground running. Monday, the a and men's basketball team took on Coppin State in the Corbett Sports Center. Whitney Jeffries was in the midst of the excitement. Monday night's game was a tight one featuring seven ties and 17 lead changes. Adrian Powell had the hot hand in the early going for the Aggies, scoring the team's first six points. The Aggies trailed much of the first half as Coppin State's Andre Armstrong led the way for the Eagles. But the Aggies grabbed a 36-34 lead with two minutes left in the half on Lamont Middleton's three-pointer. The first half ended with the teams tied at 38. The second half of the game was back and forth, neither team led by more than four points. a and Middleton steals the ball and gets it ahead to Powell, who lays it in, giving the Aggies a 40-38. Andre Armstrong comes right back, though, with a three-pointer, giving the Eagles a one-point lead. a and Jeremy Underwood answers by nailing this amazing three-pointer with just nine seconds remaining. Coppin State has one last chance. but their basket at the buzzer is rolled too late. The Aggies escape with a thrilling 63-62 win. Jeremy Underwood made a great quarterback decision. Witter wasn't open on the inside option. Powell wasn't open on the out outside option. And he made the right decision. And he, he, he shot it with a lot of confidence and a lot of poise. You know, he can live to tell his grandkids about this shot. And kind of double team, Adrian Powell played off me a little bit. He had faith to pass me the ball and had faith in me to make it. So I knew that I made a mistake that I made last game. So the whole thing that was in my mind as I was taking the shots, I had to redeem myself. I couldn't let it happen again. I promised my teammates it wouldn't happen again. So, I mean, I redeemed myself and I hit the shot, shot it with confidence. While Coppin State leads the all-time series against the Aggies, a and has been dominant at home, improving to 15-11 here in Corbett Sports Center. For the Aggie Sports Report, I'm Janine King. So the win puts Aggies back in the win column, as this past Saturday, a and suffered a tough loss at the hands of Morgan State. Last week, the Aggie men's basketball team hosted Morgan State in a game that had the crowd on the edge of their seats. <laughs> Adrian Powell's layup gave the Aggies a five-point lead with four minutes and 21 seconds in the game. Dwayne Johnson responded with the layup, another layup and a free throw from Anthony Hubbard, and Morgan State was back on top, ending the game with a score of 55-52. to Okay, let's take a look at the current standings. Norfolk State and North Carolina Central remain undefeated. a and is tied for fifth in the conference. The Bears lost at North Carolina Central on Monday night. And here's a look at the rest of the teams. Aggie men's basketball coach Cy Alexander joins us in the studio now to talk basketball. Hi, I'm Janine King, and I'm here with the men's basketball coach, Coach Alexander. How you doing? Hi, Janine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How about uh, yourself? I'm doing fine. Anytime you get a win, you're always doing pretty good. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had an exciting game Monday night. Let's talk about that. It was a finishing, like a thrilling finish. Yeah, uh, our young people, I thought, persevered uh, against a very good cop and team. We got down, we got up, we got down. And we actually got down in the last minute by two points, 62 uh, to 60, and uh, we called a timeout. And we had two options for the play. One was to go inside, and, and one was to go outside, inside to Austin Witter and outside to Adrian Powell. And neither option was open, so our, our junior point guard, um, Jeremy Underwood uh, showed a lot of guts and, and made a big time three point shot uh, with about seven seconds to go. And, and then uh, Coppin, you know, got the ball and pushed it up the court and scored. But uh, as they scored, the time had run out. So we, we got a big conference win and it, it gives us uh, 10 wins overall and uh, three and three in the conference. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. <laughs> well, I hear you a lot uh, talk about finishing top three in the conference. And can you talk about those goals? Yeah, well, 
if you, uh, the, the key in the Mideastern Athletic Conference, obviously, if you win the tournament, you go to the NCAA tournament. And, and the tournament is, is the big deal in March. And if you're in the top three, you get a bye in, in the first round. So instead of having to win four games, you only have to win three. So if you can, if you can finish in the top three, that's, that's huge because having to play that extra game uh, it's, it's a little tiring, a little taxing. So, you know, one of our goals, and we still have a legitimate shot at, at finishing in the top three. And, over, and the other thing that we want to do is this program has not had a overall winning record since, I think, 1995. And so one of our goals is, is to try to win at least 16 games. And we had 10 now, we got 10 to, pl 10 to play. So we got to try to win six out of our next 10 games and to try to have a, you know, make history to have a winning record for the first time in 16 years. And, you know, as you said, it's been a while since a and has been really above here, yeah. you know. So how realistic are those goals? Well, we're close. Uh, we, if we can, what, we've have, what we have to do is we've got to win a few games on the road. Uh, we've got to win, you know, maybe two on the road, hopefully. And we cannot afford to lose. We have four more uh, home games uh, against, I think, Savannah State, South Carolina State, Bethune, Cookman, and Florida A&M. So, you know, if we, we, if we could find a way to win all, all of our home games and then find a way to win a couple road games, you know, we'd put ourselves in position to potentially, you know, have, have a winning record. Okay. Well, what are the strengths and the weaknesses of our team right now? Well, I think the strengths are that we got seven seniors. Uh, but on the flip side of that, a weakness is those seven seniors have never won. So it would be something different if we had seven seniors and they're coming off three years of, of winning, but they're actually coming off three years of losing. So there, there's a certain mindset that we're, we're having to work through to help them understand, you know, what it takes to win close games and because we've lost our, our share of close games this year. And that's why last night's win was, was such a big factor for us was a big key because now we we understand what it takes to win a close game uh, another strength is that we're a pretty good perimeter shooting team uh, when Adrian Powell or Gene Louise me or uh, Lamont Middleton or Jeremy Underwood when those young men get going we're a pretty good team from the perimeter we also have a, a great shot blocker in Austin Witter now uh, one of the weaknesses is we're not physically tough enough. You know, we, we get pushed around a little bit. And, and, and that's one of the things that in our recruiting, as we lose these seven seniors, we're going after guys who are a little more physically tougher uh, and, and as well as a little more mentally tougher. So, you know, we can, we can improve in that area. But I, I like <clears throat> the path that in the direction that the program is going in. I think we're working very hard. And I appreciate the fact that our young men have, have accepted me and my style of coaching. And, and uh, you know, with a little luck, hopefully we can keep this thing going and, and uh, get those 16 wins that we so badly want. How do you plan on toughening these players to go against these other teams? Um, well, it, it's just a matter of repetition and practice. And, and I, I'm a big film guy. <clears throat> I like to show a person so they can visually see what they are not doing. So we spend <clears throat> probably more time in the film room at this stage of the season than we do on the practice floor. We may practice for an hour and 10 minutes and then we'll come back and watch film for another hour because right now the key is saving your legs as you move forward in the month of February, but seeing what you didn't do and trying to correct it. So I, I think the way you to toughen them up physically and mentally is, is by visually showing them what you didn't do and then challenging them to, to get it done. Okay. Yeah, so who are your team captains? <clears throat> is there really a clear leader in this team? G great question. Um, well, what I did was, and this is um, kind of different, I named all seven seniors captains wow. because I wanted <clears throat> the seniors to take onus of the team. I wanted them to feel like it was 
their team. And so I meet with them quite a bit, the seniors, to talk about what are we doing <clears throat> that they like, what are we doing that they don't like, and I want their input because they've been in the program for three years. They understand the, the rigors of the academics here at A&T. They understand how their bodies are feeling. I don't want to push them to the limit where they can't function in, in March when tournament time comes around because one of the things that I noticed last year, the team had a 8-2 and two record in January last year mm -hmm. and a 2-8 and eight record in February. And why that turnaround occurred, some of it was mental fatigue, some of it was physical fatigue. So that's why I'm, I'm a big believer, Janine, in, in communication. And, and uh, I, t I tell uh, my players all the time I have two degrees and neither one of them are in mind reading. So I, you, you need to talk to me. We need to be able to, uh, to, to, to speak openly and honestly about how you're feeling. So I think the, the, the senior leadership from those seven guys is, is, is a big key. Okay. Well, give us your thoughts on traveling north for the next two games. Well, I'm so afraid that our young people are going to look at the record of University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. They won in 15 overall, I think one in four in the conference but they have talent. And it, it's what I call a trap game. And I have to be very, very hard and demanding the remainder of this week so that we don't go to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore feeling that it's a cakewalk. Because you, you go in there feeling like that against a team that record is not that good, but their talent level is a lot better than their record. So they're capable of beating us. So <clears throat> we've got to really hone in on our mental preparation for UMES and try to get by that game. And the other thing is we cannot let, allow our young people to look past UMES to Delaware State, who is one of the top three teams in the league right now, and, and, and blow the game against UMES. So right now, we're not even concerning ourselves with, with Delaware State. It's all about the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and understanding that their record means absolutely nothing, that they are a much better team than the record says. Okay. Well, you know, we, it was a pleasure having you here. I am so glad you came and spoke with us. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> all right, back to you, Isis. Coming up, we're going to check in with the swim team and see how they celebrated their senior day. Also, women's basketball, track, and much more. As we go to break, take a look at the men and women's basketball schedule. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm Isis, and this past Monday, the women's basketball team took on Coppin State, and our very own Ian Deere was at the game and has the story. The Aggies and Coppin State Eagles is always a tight matchup, and this game, the Aggies were looking for vengeance after their last loss to the Eagles in the MEAC tournament. Down 15-9 in the first half, the senior Jaquela Berry gets a great steal and is fouled. This leads to an 8-1 run, and the Aggies getting the lead 18 to 16. But Coppin State's Leola Spotwood helped the Eagles regain the lead with some key jumpers. The Aggies are down to half 28 to 25. In the second half, junior Amber Calvin helped power a 7-3 run with a perfect three-pointer to bring the score to 32-30. The Eagles answered back with a three-pointer to regain the lead but Adriana Nazario caps an 11-2 Aggie run with a clutch and one to pull the Aggies ahead 43-35. to 
The Aggies hold on for the win, 70 to 64. After a successful run at home, head coach Terrell Robinson talks a little bit about his team going on the road next week. Well, I'm hoping that, you know, as far as practice, you know, they listen a little bit more. You know, it's kind of hard, um, you know, to go back to the Howard game with a tough game. And, and the end result of that is that they're looking for answers the next day. And uh, we try to provide it. And then when they see success with the answers that we give them, you know, hopefully it'll continue to roll. You know, um, they, they told me that they're going to get things going. And I, I really think that. I think we got the pieces. Just matter of, you know, taking care of the little things. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be different when you playing in front of someone else's home crowd, but you know we're just gonna carry our hearts and our tips in about that play. The Aggies improved to 12 and 7 overall for the season and 31 27 overall against the Coppin State Eagles. Their next game at home is against Bethune Cookman on February 9th. I'm Ian Deer for the Aggie Sports Report. Thanks, Ian. The ladies have now won two in a row as they also beat Morgan State this past Saturday here on campus. The A&T women started fast and furious against the Bears, grabbing a 17 point lead by the half. Four Aggies scored in double figures as the ladies shot nearly 52% from the field for the game. Ariel Bercy and Amber Calvin combined for 29 points and 7 assists. Forward Jaquela Berry finished with 14 points and 9 rebounds while Tracy King collected a double-double, scoring a team high of 22 points and adding 13 rebounds. And the 90 points represent a new season high for Coach Robinson's team. Okay, let's take a look and see where the ladies stack up versus the rest of the conference. Hampton sits atop of the standing. They are the only undefeated women's team in the conference. A&T has moved up thanks to those back-to-back -back wins. And this is how the rest of the conference looks. the men's basketball coach Cy Alexander join us in the studio earlier in the show. Now we have the pleasure of being joined by the women's coach Terrell Robinson. Hey I'm Janine King I'm here with the women's basketball coach Coach Robinson how you doing? Good how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Good. Well six games to the six games into the conference schedule your team has a four and two record. Tell us how things have been going on from this point. Well, every game has been a been a dogfight, and that's kind of what you expect going into conference. You know, every team that you're playing against at this point is playing for something, and that's um, either a MEAC uh, regular season championship or a position in the, in the uh, MEAC tournament. Okay. Do you sometimes feel as if you're going to a gunfight with a pea shooter? You have only eight available players. Has, this has to be tough for you. Not really. You know, we have um, in those eight players, we have a lot of versatility. You got... Um, five to six of those players that can play multiple positions. So when we get someone in foul trouble, I don't really panic because I can always drop someone down to the one to the two or the two to the three. So we, we've had flexibility uh, because of our versatility. So no, I'm, I'm pretty cool right now. And no players ever been tired or anything? They've just been ready to go? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, even if they're tired, I'm able to, you know, move somebody to another position, rest someone, then get them right back in there and pull somebody out. So our versatility right now, I think, is also um, an advantage in, in going into in the conference play against other teams. Cool. Does the lack of depth affect the way you manage a game? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, like I said, we um, have a lot of players in different positions. The one position that we probably are lacking is the uh, five position. We have two young ladies and, and one that we're really um, counting on right now, and Ebony Ross, um, as Jasmine Parker, um, a sophomore uh, for us, starts to get more comfortable in her role. But um, as far as our scheme, everybody knows what, what they need to do in different positions, even if, we, even if I move Adriana Nazario to the two, um, who's our starting, well, was our starting point guard before she um, got hurt. Um, and Amber Calvin can play either or. So Jaquela Berry can play one through five. So we're, we're, we're in good shape. So your players are very flexible. Yep, yep, very versatile. You must be a good coach then. No, they're good players. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you look ahead, what are some things uh, that you're looking for improvement in? Defense, defense. Um, before non-conference, I thought we did a good job of, of uh, really um, following our scouting report in reference to how we defend certain teams' offensive sets. 
And um, since conference time, you know, we've, I think we're averaging a little bit more points than we should. And uh, we've got to, you know, uh, find a way to, to do a better job defensively. Like last night, we gave up um, 64 points. Um, I thought we did a good job previously against uh, Morgan State in the first half, and I complained about that at uh, doing my, my post-game interview. Um, we gave up 50, 53 points in the second half. So if anything that we need to make adjustments on or get better, it needs to be our defensive uh, neck. Okay. And what are your strengths as a team? Our strengths? Um, our versatility again, you know, being able to play different people in different positions and everyone on the court being able to score. I think the last um, two games we've had, um, you know, points being scored everywhere. And, um, you know, to me, I think that's the best route of going when, you, when you're talking about uh, going in and playing people. It makes it hard for them to try to uh, game plan with you. Okay. The team gets ready to hit the road for, um, and what do you expect over the next few games? Well, hopefully we win. Um, this, this next road we're on the road is um, going to be tough playing Merrill Eastern Shore and um, Delaware State. Delaware State just won two huge games against Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. Um, Florida A&M was picked to finish, I think, fourth in the league. Bethune was the team that beat us, so that was an impressive win um, to me um, when it comes down to Dell State. Merrill Eastern Shore is still trying to find themselves, um, but I expect them to be ready for us. And then at the bottom line, any game on the road is going to be tough. Do you think it'll be tight or? I hope it's not tight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a chance it could be. But we'll, we got to find a way to win. All right, so what's going to happen if you win? Are you going to celebrate with your team? Do you have anything that you do? When you're no, we don't celebrate because it's always the season's not over yet. We'll celebrate once we reach our goals. How do you celebrate? Uh, well, if we win a championship, mm -hmm. no telling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. It's Janine King, and I've been here with Coach Robinson. We're going to take a quick break, but there's still plenty more to come. The Aggie bowling team is making news. Plus, it's senior day with the Aggie swim team. That and more right after this. The College of Arts and Sciences is the largest college in North Carolina A&T in terms of students, faculty, and number of courses taught. Our students gather to research the causes of climate change and meteorology, study human depression and social work and biology, and perform on Broadway. The university and community relax in the cradle of arts and sciences through WNAA, the University Gallery, our HDTV studio, and the award-winning University Marching Band. Visit us online. In the College of Engineering, we build bridges from the simple to the complex. We have graduate and undergraduate programs in six departments. Our students and faculty study topics that touch your life today and affect your world tomorrow. In the College of Engineering, we make the future now. For more information, visit us online. Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm Isis. The track team is already in the midst of their indoor season. Several athletes have stood out during their early going, and they ended their weekend at the 2013 Penn State National Invitational. Daryl Williams came in second in the 60 meters among the best in the world. Christian Harrison won the 1,000 meter, and the women finished third, only 30 seconds short of second place. Paris Simmons clocked in with a 1 minute and 54 second finish in the 800 meters. He now has the 8th fastest time in the MEAC. And next week, the Aggies bring double trouble. A few Aggies will compete in the Hilton Garden Invitational in Winston-Salem, while others will head for the New Balance Collegiate Invitational in New York. Here's a look at A&T's upcoming track and field schedule. The North Carolina A&T women's tennis team opened the 2013 season with a 7-0 loss to Appalachian State. The Aggies saw strong performance from senior Kayla Cross, who took Gabby Gabriel to three sets in the fourth singles match, and from junior Victoria Austin at the number two singles position. The Aggies fell in doubles by scores of 8-1, 8-4, and 8-2, before being swept into the six singles matches. You know, winning is contagious. You know, win now, win later. Uh, expectations are high. Um, athletic department's expectations are high for tennis. I get the impress that they really want to win. Um, but, you know, we're, we're still trying to put all the pieces together.
A&T swim team is wrapping up their season. This past Friday, they hosted Campbell University, and it was senior day for the Aggies. After a month-long break, the North Carolina A&T swim team is back in the pool. The swim team has already had its last home meet against Campbell University and an away meet against UNC Asheville. At Asheville, junior Christian Hill finished first place in the 200 freestyle, clocking in at 2 minutes and 11 seconds. The Aggies also finished first in the 400-yard medley with an impressive 4 minutes and 24 seconds. After their last home meet, the Aggies honored senior Lauren Bowling for her career as an Aggie swimmer. Um, I'll honestly miss my teammates the most. I'll miss the friendships. I'll miss being here every day. Uh, I've had the pleasure to have Lauren. Uh, this is her, She's a fifth-year senior. Uh, she was redshirted her first year. She has been uh, my number one butterflyer. She still has the fastest record for the 100 fly and the 200 fly. And she's just been a, a coach's dream. I mean, you know, she does everything by example. She's not always the most vocal person, but she's the quiet leader. But sometimes silence can be so loud because she does exactly what's expected. And most of the team will follow in line with her with that. Here's a look at the upcoming meets A&T swim team will be participating in. The North Carolina A&T women's bowling team finished in second place at the Lady Bulldogs Classic this past Sunday afternoon. The Aggies finished the Classic with a 10-3 record and their highest bracket tournament finish this season. The Aggies handed Bethune-Cookman a 4-3 defeat to advance into the championship round and it was the third time this season the Aggies have defeated the Wildcats. The Aggies will return to action in the Capital Classic hosted by Delaware State from February 8th through the 10th in Dover, Delaware. Thanks for watching this edition of the Aggie Sports Report. I'm Isis and we'll see you back here next week. Until next time, Aggies.